All right, just driving the uh, Honda Civic here around a little bit. This is a 2013 with just about 90,000 kilometers on it. Hope you can hear those soothing sounds that it makes. As a Honda Civic owner, you get used to this sound because these things always seem to need brakes. And it's funny that it sounds like a wheel bearing sometimes. You'll be taking a turn and it gets louder, but it's not the wheel bearings. It's actually the uh, rust built up on the rotors is the problem. So I had the rear brakes done on this uh, a couple of years ago and the uh, driver's side parking brakes seized up immediately and ruined the rotor and the uh, brake pad, which was very annoying. So now I'm just gonna do it myself. There uh, wasn't any point using a mechanic to waste my money. Just bought better parts this time around and it should turn out a bit better. But being a Honda, it's gonna need brakes again shortly, which is very annoying. So I guess we'll go over to the garage and uh, start taking this thing apart and see what we find. Alright, so we got the uh, car into the garage. Not a lot of space to work in here right now. So I think what I'll do is uh, one side at a time. I usually like to do one axle at a time because the brakes are the same on each axle and you kind of have all the parts open up to do it. So to do this job you're going to need a, a 19 millimeter socket, power bar, an impact gun, something like that. A lower profile jack, that's a three ton jack which is quite a bit more than you need. You're not going to get stands that fit under this car unless you go way up sky high. So uh, we might just use blocks of wood to uh, support the vehicle. I haven't had this apart in a while so I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to do. I've got an air compressor to pump up the uh, summer tires so you can see the uh, I got I think 18 inch wheels for the summer and then 17s uh, for the winter and uh, this is a Canadian touring model and it's very unusual it's got some of the high-end American car parts on it and some of the low-end parts on it so I believe this car, being Canadian, has like the small brake package on it with the big wheels and then it's, uh, I don't think there's many more options on the exterior that you can get for this car. I can't remember anymore. I think it's just got the leather interior. I think they all had sunroofs. I can't remember anymore. They had different style uh, wheels on the Touring model in Canada as well. And uh, so I guess we'll take a look at what else we need to do the job. So you'll need to... Uh, open the uh, brake master cylinder there and make sure that you don't overflow it when you're pumping uh, in the uh, calipers for the new brake pads. I've got a scanner that can actually uh, force bleed the uh, system for the uh, ABS module. But I don't know if we're going to need that or not. We'll see. I'm hoping it works pretty good. The ABS module is over there. If you can see it or not with all the what tubes coming off of it. You got that. I've got a tool here for winding in the rear brake calipers. I've never done this style before. I'm used to using uh, drums or a drum slash disc in the back. So we'll see how this goes. There's a... I'm really not too sure. Got the basic socket set here. I've got the uh, plated rotors here. I like to get the good CarQuest stuff, which I think is advanced auto in the US. So these are uh, fully coated rotors. They're not E-plated, like uh, I think their mid-level rotor is E-plated. So I got uh, four of those. These ones uh, don't require any brake cleaner to clean them off because they're plated, they don't come oiled because they're not going to rust nearly as quickly. I got DOT4 brake fluid. The car on the master says it takes three or four. 
I think I should have probably got DOT3. I think it lasts uh, longer, it doesn't absorb the water quite as quickly. But uh, anyway, that's what I've got. I've got the uh, rear brake pad kit. It comes with uh, stainless clips. I noticed that uh, the Platinum Professional from CarQuest is starting to come with like non-stainless clips. And I told them that's not very uh, professional level, in my opinion. But the, I don't know if anything's going to come of that. Probably not. This is the front kit here. This is the second time I'm doing this job. And this, so it came with uh, black. And it's got black in the picture. But we'll see what I've got on the car currently. Because uh, last fall I went to do this job. And I found out the front rotors were a different size than expected. So I just... Uh, chipped off as much rust as I could from the rotors and hammered in a new set of pads and I uh, was scooping again. They come with some organic grease. I prefer to use uh, this style of grease but uh, I, I bought a few packets of this but I'm not exactly sure where they are which is kind of annoying because I could use them for this job. And then uh, I guess there's a few different styles of parking brakes on these cars and uh, this one has uh, obviously rotors in the back and then it's got this uh, thing here. I did another video on how to unlock this if it gets locked up on you. So that parking brake's got a spring on it and that spring can get all stiff and uh, stop working. And I guess it comes with a bit more of the same hardware the other kit had and a couple of copper crush washers and a banjo bolt for the uh, brake line and you can see that it's got some slots in the face of the piston so you can turn that back and forth to uh, adjust it so this one will be fully out I think it'll be ready to go but the one on the car on the other side I'll have to do something with it to make it work and for tools I just have an impact gun a, uh, a wire brush some red Loctite. None of the fasteners on this car are gigantic to the point where you can't really tighten them by hand. It's not like a one-ton van where the stuff needs to be torqued to two or three hundred foot-pounds. So uh, I'm not going to have any torque settings in this uh, video. If you're really new at this, you probably should use a torque. You should use a torque wrench and uh, look up the settings. I'll see if I can find some of the values for that and put it in the description of the video. So red Loctite, when you take something off, you'll see Loctite on it. You should put more Loctite back on when you put it back. I got some Silglide silicone lubricant. I may or may not use that. Some brake cleaner. So I found something funny lately. So in Canada, we have all of the bad chemicals have come back that were banned back in the 90s. So I'm kind of surprised by that. So you can get chlorinated and non-chlorinated brake cleaner. I think these ones are all non-chlorinated, I don't know. But uh, yeah, so that's something to think about. I would recommend using non-chlorinated. I bought some uh, paint stripper recently that's banned in the US, but you can still buy it in Canada. But I wouldn't recommend it, so I'm not going to even bother showing you that. I got a, a four pound hammer. You need at least a two pound uh, plumber's hammer when you're working on brakes. And then uh, some gloves and grease and hand cleaner and stuff like that and then just some basic uh, wrenches to take some of the parts off. I think that's about it. You might need a, a C-clamp to compress the uh, calipers but I'm not exactly sure. And I got my safety glasses and my earmuffs there when I'm running the impact gun. Anytime you're under a car you should be wearing uh, glasses anyway because you're going to get something in your eyes guaranteed. So I guess what I'll do is I'll get the car up off the ground and uh, get the uh, wood blocks under it so that I'm happy with it. Then we'll show you what I did. And under the car, the drip rail has like a little lifting pad location where you can uh, lift it up. You could use the uh, jack that comes with the car. It's just going to be a bit slower. And then this is probably better to be an outdoor job. It's just I'm doing it more indoors just for privacy. It's actually a pretty nice day outside. But just so I can do, I do the video videotaping here. So uh, I'll get this apart and uh, show you where we're at. 
All right, so we got the vehicle jacked up here. So just to get the wheel off the ground, just enough to kind of turn it. There's not enough space for a, a proper jack stand. So what I'm going to do is uh, put lower the weight onto the wood and leave the jack in position. Let's just kind of bring it down carefully. So you can see I've got some pretty big timbers here. Uh, some four by sixes and then a four by four. So that's uh, about four, four, and uh, four. So maybe you're about <clears throat> they're a bit smaller than that, so maybe you're 10 or 11 inches off the ground. So we'll try to lower that down. You don't want to put it in too far so that it damages your uh, the floor of your vehicle. I can still turn the wheel. So I'm just going to put this here, grab my earmuffs, and they get this up, or off rather. And no going under the vehicle at all when you're working on it. If you need to go under it, uh, well, we'll talk about that another time maybe. You don't need to go under it for this job. If you're going to do this by hand, you would uh, loosen all the lug nuts up before you lift the vehicle. And uh, if that didn't come off so easily, you would reach from the side and hit the uh, edge of the rim with a four pound hammer, or whatever you've got lightly, just to break off that rust. Just got the wheel out of the way. Take a look at what we need to do under here. So uh, it can help if you turn the wheels to the side and then you have to turn them back to the other side to work on the uh, opposite wheel. But basically, uh, on the back here, there's the calipers and caliper adapters. So we'll need to take that bolt off right there. And there's another companion bolt on the other side down here. They look like they're pretty small. They might be 10 millimeter or something. So keep in mind that this is uh, up off the ground. I'm not supporting the axle. But uh, it's not really mandatory in this job. The reason this vehicle makes noise when you're driving is there's ridges of rust on here. If you're really desperate, you could go with a, a grinder or something, and cut, or a hammer, and chip off the rust on the edges, and it wouldn't make that sound anymore. I did that last year, and it didn't last very long. To uh, so I'm going to just replace these now because you can see that these uh, pads are actually pretty new. So, let's uh, grab a couple wrenches and see if we can get this off. Then we'll need a place to support the uh, caliper while we're working on things. Alright, I have my 11 millimeter nearby. Hopefully it's not 11. No, nope, it's actually, what is it, 12 millimeter. This is facing backwards, so I have to go the backwards direction. Yeah, it's off. So I'll have to turn, take uh, the calipers off and the adapters. I think. You could skip the, this part maybe, but it's pretty easy, so why not? Let's do it. Alright, I'm going to stop the video and get a C-clamp out so I can fully compress this caliper and then we'll uh, get going again. Alright, so this is the more traditional way of doing this. You can use a pry bar if you wanted to, or use a uh, caulking gun uh, that's been modified. But basically, what you do is you put uh, this in here, open it up until you grab the back of the uh, piston area, 
A lot of times your C-clamp, this part will break off and it's easier to do this. This one hasn't been abused enough as of yet. And uh, you would watch your master cylinder under the hood after you do one of these and make sure it isn't overflowing. So it's uh, pretty tight now. Let's say I've got it in all the way. This is pretty applicable on all brakes, so once you learn how to do it once, you're good to go. Alright, one thing I remember when I did this the last time is there's some funny clips on the uh, brake pads. They're going to try to go flying. There they go. So you don't want to kink uh, the brake hose in any way, and you don't want to dangle any of the parts from it either. So these brake pads are in pretty good shape because, like I said, they're pretty much new. But uh, there's these metal wires that we'll look at later. That uh, you need to put on to keep it. And it keeps the uh, pads spread. So when you're driving with the brakes off, they're not grabbing on here and rattling or making noises or anything. So I guess get a zip tie and I'll lift the uh, caliper out of the way. Then uh, we'll have to take the this off here. This is the uh, caliper adapter, and then uh, get the uh, rotor out of the way. All right, we're ready to go to take off the adapters and the uh, calipers now. So it's the 17 for the adapters on the back. That's actually starting to get kind of big. If uh, depending on the strength of yourself as an individual, you might. You probably should use a torque wrench on these if you've never done this before because you won't know what uh, the right feeling would be for these. Uh, you'd probably hear it if they were coming loose, but you don't want that to happen either. When you're looking at this in here, make sure that the dust shields aren't rubbing on the uh, rotors because that can make an annoying sound. And as vehicles get older, the dust shields are in worse condition. Alright, so that's the fastener there. So it's fine thread, so it's meant to be nice and snug. Got the adapter off. With the larger uh, rotors, I couldn't quite get the adapter back on, and that's what clued me in that there was something wrong with the, the whole situation. So now this has little retainers for putting on the uh, rotors and possibly to help you take them off. So you might need to get a uh, an impact screwdriver like this. So I'm sorry as a Canadian that this car was built in Canada with Phillips head screws. But that's a Japanese thing. They need to stop doing that. But these uh, basically all you need to do is uh, put in the correct size bit. These are some weird Japanese Phillips bit. Turn it to the correct uh, direction you want to go, like you're using it by hand. And then tap it. And then you'll be able to unscrew it. I had these off last year. So I didn't over tighten them, but uh, they can be a real nuisance. And again, because I had this off last year, the rotor should come off reasonably well. And you shouldn't breathe any dust of any kind from anything. So basically, uh, if you're starting to work on this and there's a cloud of dust coming, you should be wearing a mask. But I think this will come off reasonably easy. Yeah. Sometimes it can be a real battle to get that off of there. So now you're going to use your wire brush and you're going to clean up this whole area here. Again, this might be a good time to wear a mask. 
I have copy, copper anti-seize all over this, so it's actually clean and ready to go. So now I'm just going to take my gloves off and uh, start putting on the new rotor. And hopefully it all fits. If you had a non-coated rotor, you'd need to go outside right now and hose it off with freight cleaner. But mine is completely clean and perfect in every way. Hopefully it fits. I guess we got to line up these stupid screws too. I don't know why they do this. You want to make sure that it's sitting on there flat. There's no junk in behind it that's binding things up. So this is a, a good job to do. I know a lot of people are nervous about working on their vehicles. And depending on the vehicle, it can be hard to do the brakes, but in this case it's pretty easy. And it's hard to goof it up. Other than the last part when we changed that uh, caliper, that one. Might not be the first job you'd want to do. So that's on relatively tight. Now I need to take the uh, caliper adapters and uh, clean them off a little bit and load them up with the new pads. But I just want to make sure that they're going to fit because they didn't fit the last time and that was kind of a surprise. We're going to be okay. I took the thread. So uh, because Honda used so many different sizes of rotors, if you can manage it, you probably want to take your rotors off and measure them. Just like measure it from side to side. You can measure it on the back with the measuring tape or something and see uh, what size it, rotor it is before you order them. Especially if you're going to order them online because that would be a real nuisance if you got them and they're the wrong size. It'd slow you down. So uh, I got that caliper adapter cleaned up and loaded then you can see that the piston is in nice and flush there and it's not been leaking. So you want to, when you've got your car apart, you want to look around and see if there's anything broken or leaking or if there's any cracks in the rubber or anything like that. This is a Canadian car. This car doesn't get used much in the winter, but it still gets affected by it. I'm sure the Americans are freaking out by the condition of this, but this is actually really good. This is a low mile car in Canada. So, like I said, we'll get that part cleaned up and we'll get back to it. All right, so once you get the uh, caliper adapter out on the table, you'll start to take a look at it. You'll check out these uh, plungers here, these uh, the pins. And if they're not leaking and torn, you would just leave them alone. If they were starting to leak or fall apart, you can pull these out. There's some O-rings in there and you can do a rebuild on those pins. Or if you buy a caliper, they usually come with caliper adapter on them. The uh, new pads, I put them up against the, or sorry, the old pads against the new pads, and they're only worn by about a millimeter on the one side. But these have a break in material for gouging their way through the coating on the new rotors, and I just want to be complete and do the whole job. I'm trying to think if there's anything else to say about these. Yeah, so the uh, in the hardware kit, the little springs go into these holes here. Like I said, they push apart and away from the uh, rotor. The scraper was on the inside on the vehicle when I took it apart. That's the way I'm going to put it back. It's not always uh, really shown. But you can always see like the round spot from where the piston was before. If you need to kind of reverse uh, how it came apart if you took it apart too quickly. And you can see how the uh, caliper frame was grabbing onto this side. So that looks like it's all good. The kit comes with a bit of grease that you can put in here. I'm going to put the grease on the sliders and on these pins. Be very limited with how much you put on there because you don't want any grease on the pads. You don't get them dirty and clean them off. You just keep them clean when you're working on the vehicle. And uh, so it does come with a little bit of organic grease. There was an older style of ceramic grease. I think it was purple that came from... Uh, I can't think of the name of them anymore. But anyway, 
use the orange, the purple stuff or the darker color stuff makes the uh, rubber swell up and cause all kinds of problems so don't use that. So you just uh, take a look at how these uh, sliders are situated. You pop them off. Kind of put them uh, to the side in the position they came off. Now this is actually pretty precision. This has to go together nicely. So you have to go over this with a, uh, a file and clean out all of this. You kind of chip at it with the edge of the file. So uh, you just kind of tap on it and break off all the rust scale. Like if it's got funny looking little layers on it, you just want to uh, keep chipping it off here because the, the pads need to fit in there very nice. If, uh, if you got an old car and these are all crusty, your brakes are not going to disengage. So you need to get these uh, whittled down back to their uh, original size. So that's what I'm going to do right now. All right, so you can see how I've been filing this off and getting it nice and clean. The other side is a good example of what you don't want. So you can see on the top right here, there's a bit of a chunk and that's got to be chipped off. If you were to use sandpaper or something, that's just going to stay there and polish up. You got to chip that off. So if someone says that you can do this job in a half an hour, there's two things you got to think about there. One, who cares how long it takes them to, t to do the job? Because like they might have better tools than you or they might just be doing a bad job. So uh, take your time, look things over, think about what's going on and uh, you should get a good product in the end. I wouldn't worry about trying to compete with other people on the speed because you don't have any idea what quality or setup they've got. So uh, just uh, worry about yourself. Alright, so we got things cleaned up. I'm going to put the uh, pads on after I get this on the caliper adapter onto the vehicle. So I sanded these down, or filed them down, and they're pretty much good to go. I was looking at the new anti-rattle clips that came. So the old ones, I had put a bit of grease on the back of them. You can see the orange Permatex grease. And uh, they still rusted up. So I'm just going to use the, uh, the green grease that comes with the kit, but like I said, don't use the Permatex uh, green grease on the rubber. It's not going to work. The new anti-rattle clips have some kind of like a material on them. I'm not sure what they're made out of. It seems like they're pretty light, but they're generally light to begin with. I can't tell if it's uh, aluminum or uh, steel or stainless steel. I guess I could put a file on it and find out. But uh, I'm going to go with these. They might be uh, quieter or better. I guess just because they're new, I shouldn't be suspicious of them. They might. They look like they've been pretty well thought out. So I'll put those on and uh, get the uh, caliper adapter on here for the hundredth time. I'm going to say it. I feel like I've got that completely screwed up. That's funny. <laughs> All right, I better put the grease on this first. There's no way I'm going to be able to grease these without uh, getting grease on the rotor. So I'm going to shut this down and uh, put the grease on. All right, we're all greased up. So we'll get this on here again. Of course, I'm all mixed up with my orientation again. There. If you had the wheel turned to the side, obviously you'd be able to see this a, a bit better. But it can be a little bit tricky as far as uh, turning the wheel when you got one wheel off the ground. Because you might need to start the car and if your footing isn't very solid, it could be a bad idea to do that. There's not much space for clearance for this rotor, which is why these things end up being so noisy and embarrassing when you're driving around. A little bit of rust growth on the edge and it touches in here. That was just snug. Just 
I'm going to put it as tight as I can. I don't think you need to worry about breaking these off. If you had a, a torque wrench, like a half inch torque wrench, it would be long. You might not be able to fit it in the wheel well. So you'd have some trickery to get that done without turning the wheel or having it up on a hoist so you can work from below. Those are nice and tight. So now I'm going to put on the uh, anti-rattle clips. So there's not a lot to it really. I was looking at it after the fact and you can't put them in the wrong way because they're not going to fit. But sometimes they can fit the wrong way, which is annoying. So I put some grease in behind them. Just wiggle it, make sure that it's not rubbing on anything. I've never been too fond of the sound the axles and transmission make on this thing. When you roll it back, it seems like it's broken, but it's not. So those are in. I've got a bit of grease on the uh, ears, on the calipers, or the uh, pads rather. So just thinking the next step is to drop that caliper in over these pads, which I said before, it's a bit of a nuisance. So we'll load them in to here. Make sure you keep your hands clean. You don't want to get any grease on the brakes. Right, we're in completely. Good to go there. Now this is where it gets weird. Putting on these stupid clips. Because once you put it in the hole, I don't know if you're supposed to grease them or not, it tries to pop them off. And I need to get the uh, caliper ready to go here. Cut the zip tie off. Have it sitting right above it, ready to go. Get the other wire. Yeet! It's going. Why do they do this? It's the only car I've ever had that ever had these on it. And then I've lost my clip. It took off on me. You probably see it. I can't. <laughs> Alright, I'll have to turn off the video and go find it. Alright, I found it stuck to my shoe. Alright. So I'm just wondering if there's any tricks that we could apply to make this a little less painful. I don't know. You might be able to use a tool to hold these things together. I don't know. We're just going to struggle with it. We don't do it enough to think big picture. Clips are on. I'm going to get that caliper in here. Alright, we're safe. It's not going to go flying anywhere now. So I guess when you're putting the caliper back on, you need to get these uh, pins to line in nicely, because it's sort of a boxed in area. You see that or not. Just tightening the top fastener by finger tight here. Put in the bottom one. Going the wrong way.
That one's a bit hard to see. Let me get on my knees here and take a look. Follow my own instructions here. It is hard to see for sure. We're good. These don't need to be as tight as the uh, adapter fasteners, but it's a shorter wrench, so you still got to put in quite a bit of force on them. All right, that's good. So now, before I put the wheel back on, we're going to kind of just check things out. Make sure it's not binding, it shouldn't be tight. I'm gonna push the brake pedal in a couple times for a few reasons. If you do, if you, when you separate the uh, caliper like that, there's a bunch of gap and your brakes aren't gonna work initially. You gotta push your brakes a couple times uh, just to take up the slack in the brake. And then we'll do it just to see if it releases correctly or not as well. Floor. It went to the floor once, so if you had done all four brakes and they were all really loose, you might have to pump the brakes four or five times before you could stop. And by then you might have hit something, so that's no good. Yeah, it's still nice and loose, so I guess we'll uh, put the wheel back on. I did a long video on how to install the wheels, so I'm not going to get into that. But being that I haven't used these wheels in a while, i got to check the pressure on them, make sure they're all the same. Check them for leaks, stuff like that. And I guess we will uh, move on to the back after this. Okay, I guess we'll just have one more little clip in this part of the video, and then I'm going to do a part two for the rear brakes. And so we didn't use the uh, scanner for this because I never broke open the uh, brake fluid system. Other than uh, having to top this up or maybe suck a little bit out of the uh, cylinder there, master cylinder. So one of the reasons why the car was making so much noise was, as you can see, there's a rust ridge that's past uh, or where the brake pad's supposed to be riding. So the brakes are, they're pushing everywhere because it's polished, right? But they're rubbing on this ridge here. So you could chip that off. That's what I did in the, uh, the fall when I changed the pads the first time. And I chipped it off on the uh, this side as well. But as you can see, it doesn't look so great on this side either. So it's got a lot of rust scale here. You could try to resurface these, but uh, people don't do that very much anymore. Not really into it. But you can see there's uh, chunks of rust here. that They're kind of polished, so they've been rubbing on something as uh, the vehicle's been driving. So that's... Uh, why even though these brakes don't look worn out, they're still not really any good. So that's uh, the reason why we changed them. So it'll be a part two here on the uh, back brakes. So thank you for watching.